Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and in this video I want to take a look at swept boss base and also the swept cut features. So first I want to talk a little bit about the swept boss base and essentially creating solid sweeps. Now there are a few new additions to this, and we're dealing with SOLIDWORKS 2016 here, and SOLIDWORKS has given us a little bit more control over the sweep. So I want to take a look at this example where we have a sweep path, we have a profile, then we also have a guide curve, and we're going to use a few different variations of those. So first we'll start by selecting Swept Boss Base, and notice that we have Sketch Profile and Circular Profile options. If all you're trying to do is create tubing or piping, select the Circular Profile, select your path, and put your diameter, and you can do things like create a thin feature and apply a wall thickness. It allows you to do things like determine whether or not you sketch the inside or outside diameter of the value and determine if you want to do for instance a midplane and it just makes the process so much easier you no longer have to sketch the profile of the tube you don't have to sketch the id and od and it really just simplifies that process if you're trying to make a pipe but if you want to use a sketch profile which is what most people do you simply have to select the profile and the path now, as we look at this, we're taking our rectangular profile and sweeping it along a path which is comprised of really a few lines and a few arcs. So very straightforward, not too much that you need to do here, but we do have some additional options. Before I add in a guide curve, I'm going to expand the options and take a look at the profile orientation and profile twist. Now this looks a little bit different than it did in 2015, so now we have to essentially select the orientation, whether it's follow path or keep normal constant, and you notice that when we use keep normal constant, it changes the way the center looks because it's essentially taking this planar sketch, and as we go along the path, it keeps it vertical. If we tell it to follow path, it'll actually rotate the sketch as if it's normal to the path the entire time. So. The next thing we want to look at is profile twist. Inside here we can specify a twist value, which is degrees, radians, or revolutions. For instance, if we want to turn it once during the direction of the sweep, you notice that it fails, and that's because as it rotates one time and the long direction goes along the, the radius values, these two arcs, it actually will intersect itself. But if you put in a small value like 0.25, and merge tangent faces, you can see that we'll at least get a preview of what's going on. Now if we turn off thin feature, it has a better chance of actually creating it. But in most cases when you're dealing with a rectangular profile, you're probably not going to twist it along the path. But we can do things like specify twist, the direction vector, or tangent to adjacent faces. In most cases you'll do specify twist and pick one of these values. Now for us, we're going to say none, we're going to carry on doing a thin feature, but now we want to go back and add a guide curve. Now a guide curve is an additional way for you to modify the shape of the sweep. Now in this case I have this curve, and you'll notice that it currently fails. If we turn off thin feature, the preview comes back. Now as we look at it from the top, you can see what's happening here. It's taking this profile and it's sweeping it. And once it gets to where the guide curve curves in, it starts to affect the shape of the actual profile. So what happens here if you try to use something like a thin feature, it has issues. But if we say okay, and we come back and we do a shell after the fact, then this has a better chance of actually creating it. You notice that even if it has a bad radius of curvature value, it'll still allow you to complete the shell. We can do a section view and take a look at that. Now that we've talked a little bit about doing a solid sweep, let's talk about doing a sweep cut. Now one of the classic examples that I like to use is cutting threads. Now in SOLIDWORKS 2016, they've actually added a thread tool that will cut physical threads for you so you no longer have to go through this process, but I still want to show it anyways because it's something that people probably wouldn't think about when they're talking about swept cuts. So in most cases, when you do a sweep, you have a profile and a path, and most of the time, your profile is centered on your path, or it intersects the path in some way. But what we have here, if I go ahead and hide the solid body, is I have a triangular profile and a path that is not intersecting with that. So if we turn our solid body back on, 
We go up to swept cut. You notice inside here we have three options instead of two. We can use a sketch profile, we can select a circular profile, or we can use a solid profile. Think of a solid profile as something like a mill bit or a lathe bit that's gonna be moving through your part. Now, in these cases, the circular profile will give you the same effect as it did in the swept boss base. But in this case, you would always have to attach it or essentially it would always be centered on the path. Now, in this case, again, our profile is way off here to the side. So we're gonna select the sketch profile. We're gonna select this line as the path. And under options, we're gonna use specify twist value. And we're gonna say number of revolutions. Now, if I say eight, you can see that this rotates around the part and it'll physically cut away the material. So if I say, okay, you can see that I'm cutting something that looks kind of like an Acme thread. Now, of course, when you do this, you have to be very careful with the size of your profile, where it's located and how many twists you have. But if you have things like a known height and a known thread pitch, you can easily factor for that stuff. We also have the available option to increase this value, but at some point when these extrude triangles or the swept triangles intersect each other, it's gonna to start to fail. But we're gonna say okay, and you can see that we can still manipulate that to some point and get a cut thread. Now, of course, this is not how you have to use the, uh, the sweep. This is more of like a, a cylindrical revolved cut that moves along a profile. But again, this is sort of an example that most people don't think about when they try to use sweep. They always wanna take a profile and move it along a path, but using that twist option can be kind of a neat trick to do things like make uh, you know, some of knurled cuts on parts, because you can do this sort of uh, option and do it both directions. So then we could show both of these. We could again do a swept cut, select the profile, select the path, go to our options, specify twist value, eight revolutions, and select the other direction. And when we select the other direction, we're essentially cutting two separate paths. You see that we're cutting one and the other. It's sort of a, a funky oblong path here, but so you can use the same profile, the same path multiple times and get different results simply by modifying the parameters. So again, in most cases, people are gonna be using the solid sweep to do like round rectangular profiles along a path, but there are more ways that you can utilize these features. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and would love to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts or suggestions for other videos in the comment box below. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit learnsolidworks.com for more SolidWorks tips, tricks, and tutorials.